meeting down in the kitchen. Oh, just because you're allowed to use magic now does not mean you have to whip your wands out for everything. You hungry, Harry? You should be all right, Harry. Game is quite a turn. Harry Potter. <laughs> Serious. Found out soon enough. He's been attacking Dumbledore as well. Fudge is using all his power, including his influence of the Daily Prophet, to smear anyone who claims the Dark Lord has returned. Mm -hmm. The minister thinks Dumbledore's after his job. But that's insane. No one in their right mind can believe that Dumbledore's exactly the point. Fudge isn't in his right mind. It's been twisted and warped, I fear. Now, I'm fearing it. People who things had the last time we were not gained power. They almost destroyed everything we hold most dear. Now he's returned. I'm afraid the minister will do almost anything to avoid facing that terrifying truth. We think. Voldemort wants to go that his own. Fourteen years ago, we had huge numbers of his command, not just witches, but wizards, and all manner of dark creatures. He's been recruiting heavily, and we've been attempting to do the same. But gathering followers isn't the only thing he's interested in. <clears throat> we believe Voldemort may be out to see. Serious. Something he didn't have last time. You mean, like a weapon? No, that's enough. He's just a boy. You say much more and you might as well induct him into the water straight away. Good, I want to join. If Voldemort's raising an army, then I want to fight. Ladies and gents in Cyberland, coming back to you with another film review, and this time we're on to the fifth movie of Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. So, before I get into the movie, we have a little backstory with the book. So at this point, The, the fourth movie had already dropped and people were freaking out about the, um, the book. Like people were ecstatic, ecstatic about seeing the fourth movie, but people in general, if I'm not mistaken, and let me make sure I'm not because kind of know when when everything was, uh, <coughs> how it was going. But I could have swore. Ah, oh, jeez.
Ah, okay. So, <coughs> God of the Fire came out in 2005. Okay. But before God of the Fire came out, the, the book, Order of the Phoenix, was getting ready to drop. And I'll never forget it. Because the 6 and 7, I was like, okay. But what had happened, by the time the fifth book came, was coming, people were freaking out about Harry Potter. Harry Potter had just ridiculously, you know, just shot up in the sky, just went above and beyond what people would think. And... It got gotten to the point where you couldn't talk about nobody. You, you, everywhere you went, somebody had something to say. Everywhere you went, there was a poster, there were books, there was something going on with Harry Potter. I was humble about the situation. I was excited, and even I would talk to people at, at college that I, I hung out with when I was there. Um, we would talk about, we would theorize certain things and talk about certain things about what we thought would probably happen. We knew that somebody was going to get killed. We knew an important character was going to get killed. We were, but our money was on, well, who is it? We knew it wasn't going to be the three. But we knew that either somebody in Ron's family, and it had to be somebody we knew, somebody personable. So we were all thinking about who could it be. It was we were like it was going to be Arthur, you know, Ron and uh, Ron's dad, or even the mother. We thought it was going to be one of the siblings, like Fred or George. The irony of that one. One of those characters. <laughs> Some people were thinking it was Dumbledore. I don't think I don't recall anybody thinking Snape. We all felt Snape had a ways to go yet. There, it, it wouldn't make sense to kill him yet. Um. And for the most part, uh, some people even said Lupin and said Sirius. We were like, you know. And I felt Sirius is too soon if he did because he just kind of already appeared, you know. And then the poster drops for what the cover's going to look like. And I remember people were flipping out. It was crazy. All over online, it was all over the place message boards everywhere talking about this what what the picture meant what could it be where is harry at why does he look so serious why is it called the order of the phoenix all oh, everybody's order of phoenix is, is the the dumbledore army it, it was just all this stuff it was it was a it was a very fun and interesting time to be a part of that 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 period you know there's cert everybody has something in their lifetime that they they remember as something remarkable and i before this book dropped, I was like, you know, read the books, have a good time. And this was the time where I was really excited for the fifth book. The sixth and seventh, I was like, you know, I was cool. But the fifth book in particular, I was very, very, very excited about that book. I just was, I was so excited. I couldn't wait for that book to come. <coughs> and... Um, it got real serious because then there came a pre-order and Amazon literally said that because they were so concerned about somebody getting a copy and scanning it and leaking it online, they said that if you order it by this date and this date only, this is your last day to order it. I ordered mine way before that. The day that the book drops, it will be delivered to you. Kid you not. And it was so crazy because the news was covering it, media, you know, any media outlet was covering it. They were showing Walmart, they were showing Amazon, Amazon warehouses just packing books, packing books, just, just boxes, stacks to the ceiling of the frickin' warehouse. And they were all Harry Potter, Order of the Fiends books. And I remember... It was so serious that every person that had ordered a, a copy of the, of the book, they had to sign for it. Normally you have to sign for some electronic, right? It was that serious that every person was... FedEx, I think FedEx was able, got the contract for, the, for, for delivering 
the books that day. But I remember I had to sign for the book. And a lot of people were saying that. Some people were getting their book at 1 in the morning. Some people were getting the book at 5 in the morning. People were waking up. Some people stayed up that night. Some people were camping. I kid you not, camping out. Like, you know, you camp out for the premiere of a movie. People were camping at Borders and Barnes and Nobles like for, for a couple days before the release of the book to get their copy. And the store, it was, it was, it was crazy. Um, I don't recall if it happened before the fifth book or if it happened after the sixth, but I remember, I do distinctly remember the fifth book when, when it came out, it was just, it was crazy. It, it was, it was so cool to me personally because that regardless of how you feel about Harry Potter, I always took a positive, I always took the positive side of it was the fact that you had that many kids, you had that many adults, you had that many people all in different parts of the world who were excited to read this book. And I thought that was the, the most special thing about it. Whether you agree with the magic and you're religious and you you don't believe in that and you feel... it, Whatever. I got it. You don't like it, fine. Don't fucking read it. But what I thought was fascinating and interesting is that this one thing could pull all these people together regardless of their age regardless of their gender regardless of their background their economic background this specific incident could pull all these people together and just sit down and have a hot cocoa at one in the morning everybody chat and talk and just have a good time no fighting no arguing no, no, no cops showing up. No shootings. No, nobody getting robbed for a book. Everybody's sitting down and literally just talking about they're so excited to read the book. They've been waiting for this, and and it was it was just a very positive situation. I remember. I mean, I didn't sit out. I, I just ordered mine. I, I didn't have time to do that. <laughs> but I was really happy because when the book did drop, I got it, and. I think I waited until that that Christmas winter session to read it, if I'm not mistaken. But nonetheless, I got it, and it was real big, real thick. And when I read it, I was just, I was shocked. I was completely thrown aback about certain things that came up. And then for the first time, seeing Harry actually lose his cool, like really lose his cool, um, that was interesting to see. And also Dolores Sunbridge, the epitome of like, just epitome of evil. I, I think in some, some ways of looking, I think she was worse, worse than Voldemort. Um, she was... Uh, I, per, I don't think she should have been sent to ask him um, at the end of the day. I think she should have been executed because, you know, just, well, we'll get to that later, later in the later books. Um, so, for the most part, this, this book is about, you know, Harry being treated like he's a liar, just, you know, and that he's not telling the truth about Cedric about Voldemort, he just wants attention. And pretty much the, the, the purpose of Harry in this book is to grow up a little bit more and also start start saying the hell with the authority. We're gonna we're gonna handle this shit ourselves. We're not gonna let anybody dictate to us anymore about what we can and can't learn. And we're gonna learn whatever the fuck we need to defend ourselves against Voldemort and his army. And if you don't like it, fuck you. And this I felt Harry and Ron and Hermione pretty much just said they got the balls to do it and they're going to kick ass and take names if they have to. And um, this was that this was that book that showed that they're willing to do what is necessary. Not necessarily kill, but they're willing to do what they have to do to get things done because it, there's too much on there's too much on st at, at stake now, especially after what happened with Cedric. It. it with Cedric being killed, that was a um, an, uh, a I wouldn't say a reminder, but it was 
It was just to let them know you guys are expendable at some point. If you any any one of you guys can get it, you guys aren't kids anymore. You're not uh, exempt from being killed by these bastards. So you guys got to know how to defend yourselves. You're going to have to know how to fight. You're going to have to know how to protect yourself. And there can't be no, there really can't be any error, you know. And I think that was the overall just besides Harry also, you know, dealing with hormones and shit. <laughs> Because the fourth movie kind of had a little bit of that, but the fifth movie really starts to blossom that to some degree. My rating for the film is a 10 out of 10 yes sirs. Um, Just like the third movie, this is my second favorite film. It also is my second favorite book. And I think maybe because of what happened when I first read it, that, that whole... The memory of that time when it went, when everything went down the way it did, it was just, it was just a special moment, one of those special moments for me, you know. Um, I don't have, I can't remember every single one, but I do remember 2003 when that book dropped, and then when the movie came too, it was just, you know, it was, it was just refreshing all over again. It was, the, it was just refreshing, you know, that whole time period all over again, just a couple of years later. <laughs> and it was exciting, you know. When when the way I'm talking about the book right now in the movies, because they're they're the screenplay is pretty identical. There's just some stuff that's cut out. I do think the one scene that should have been cut out that should not have been cut out was when um, Ron, I think it was Ron, broke Malfoy's jaw because of the Quidditch match that was shut down. That should have been in the movie. I felt that was very invigorating I loved it it's one of my favorite parts in the fifth book because the shit that Malfoy had done at that point warranted it and also the ending of um, of Order of the Phoenix in the book was very very serious when it came when it was exposed um about a lot of the um, Slytherin members, their parents got busted for being Death Eaters and threatening Harry what they're going to do. And I just felt, I wonder, for the way J.K. wrote the book, if it had been an adult situation, what what would Harry have said to them instead of what he did say? Because I would have told them, you know, fuck what you heard. Um, we can throw it on right now. Forget all these these idle threats and these innuendos. We can get down right now. I, I think we've had enough. We're, we've had enough talking up into for the last couple of years. I think it's time we get we, we handle this shit right now. Because the stuff that Crab and Goyo and, and Draco and a couple other of the, uh, the the Slytherin students were saying literally directly to Harry at that point, it warranted that there doesn't need to be any more talking. We need to just throw down and, and just get this done. Because, uh, you know, they, they already made it clear they're going to try to kill him. And um, Harry saying what he said, it, it should have just been uh, a lot more direct as opposed to him just making comments about it, these guys' parents. It should have just been like, you know, well, we, we can go, we can go. And then, unfortunately, it might suck if your parents are locked up and their kid is dead. You know, it should have been some shit he should have said like that, you know. But nonetheless, it was a good, it was a great movie, great story, darker than the fourth book. <laughs> Just, I didn't see the 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 finale death. I, I we all knew it was coming. We just didn't know who it was. And then when it, we found out who it was, it was it was uh, it was heartbreaking. It's very bittersweet. I think. With this character, besides one other character, well, actually a couple other characters, um, I felt those were probably the ones that hit me the hardest, you know? I mean, I didn't cry, but it was just, you... It's hard to accept, but you gotta accept it. It's like, it was one of those things. Um, that being said, if you saw the first four, you know, watch the fifth. That's all I can say. I would not advise you to skip anything for sure. So with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.